start date 100056.2. Welcome to Star Trek Discovery Podcast, a kind of smart, kind of funny podcast about new and classic Star Trek. Uh, I was going to say, I think Giraffe is the captain now, but. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at um, me. Look at me. I'm the I will run now. the show for the night. Thank you uh, to everyone. I didn't know if I was going to make it tonight. Had to work a little bit later than usual, but the LA traffic gods shone down upon me and I made it back in time. So very excited. Uh, I'm your acting captain, Mariah Gossett. With me on the view screen, we have Clyde Haynes and Giraffe. Whoop, whoop. Giraffe is back Hello. again for another Spock centric episode. Excited to <laughs> dig into episode seven of Stra uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. But first, Happy Picard Day, everybody. Happy oh. Picard Day. Woo. If you did not get to tune in, Clyde got to host an official Twitter hangout with the Star Trek uh, Twitter account, chatting with some other entertainment journalists, talking all things Picard. Uh, Clyde, how was it? How can people find it? Uh, so just go head over to, uh, I believe it's uh, Star Trek... P plus. So that's the Paramount plus um, handle. Um, and they're retweeting it. And so you can kind of watch it, um, kind of watch the replay. It was great. Got to hang out with um, a bunch of really cool Trekkies, including um, I think we were hanging out with uh, uh, Lauren from IGN and Jamie from Comic Con or from Comics comics.com and and then um ryan um from uh the hollywood reporter and so we got a chance to talk about our favorite episodes our favorite quotes um you might be able to guess one of my favorite quotes uh <laughs> we talked about um, there are four lights for those who are just listening to the podcast yes. and not watching <laughs> there are four lights um <laughs> It, we really talked about the impact that Picard has had as a leader. We talked about his evolution from TNG to Picard, from the Enterprise to La Serena. Um, it was a quick, short hang, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, who doesn't enjoy talking Trek or Picard with a bunch of other Trekkies? Like, that's that's always fun. Uh, I don't so. know anybody else who enjoys any of those things, Clyde. <laughs> no. no one. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um all right. Well, I think we're going to figure out our own little mutiny plan. We're going to uh, do that through the power of a good meal and jump into this episode. Uh, so this is The Serene Squall, directed by Sydney Freeland, written by Bo DeMeo and Sarah Tarkoff. Um, and some fun notes. This is like a really great episode for representation, both in front of and behind the camera. Um, Sydney Freeland is a trans woman. Uh, she's also indigenous um, and she's directed quite a few episodes of FX's Reservation Dogs, um, uh, which is Good a great, show. great TV show as well as some, show. as some episodes of um, uh, Peacock's Rutherford Falls, which I also really enjoyed. And we also get Jesse James uh, Cattell, who plays Dr. Aspen slash Captain Angel. And we'll talk all about them. Um, and I know that she's on the new Peacock show, Queer as Folk, as well. So super exciting. I'm really Which excited. I think also de debuted this week. Yeah, it just came out, I think, mm -hmm. th this past week um, in time for Pride Month. So I think we all know what time it is. It is time for some... It's time for some hot freaks. <laughs> yes. And if you want to chat along with us, feel free to type in capital H, capital F, and give us your hot freak. And if you just have a comment or a question, feel free to, to type in capital P, capital O, capital D in the chat. And we'll take a look at your question or your comment. Do it. Draft, what are some hot takes? What are your spicy thoughts about this episode? Okay. So first of all, I know you know I love a good Spock centric episode, but I have a lot of problems with it again. <laughs> uh, but I have a lot of theories that go with that episode. So I don't know. Is that a hot frag? Should we like wait a little bit? Like, 
we can, the, we'll, we'll the... dive into some deeper topics, but do you have any, uh, like uh, overall, would you say this is like, a uh, if you were to give this like a, a out of 10 ranking or, you know, I loved it. You... Very good episode. It's funny. There's some like hijinks, some switcheroos, um, great acting again. Um, we're going very serenely <laughs> towards the end of the of the season. So uh, we're see episode seven. It was absolutely great. I loved everything about it, except like little little things. No, Uhura, what's up with this? Why? That's the only thing that's gonna make me like dump my grade. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and I definitely want to talk about it because I I have some some big thoughts too. But uh, Clyde, okay. hot hot freak. I, I thought it was I thought it was a good episode. Um, it felt a bit like a third date, if I have to be honest. Ooh. No, um, Quote you know, was, I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was really interested to see where this episode was going because it started out with a lot of kind of double entendres. We we talked about the first date, the third date. We talked about kind of interesting literature. Like there was all these practices and I was like, oh, there was a lot of sultriness is happening. And then it feels like the tone shifted kind of on a dime and became this campy, twist field pirate who who done it kind of episode so i thought mm -hmm. that was interesting um and so it's also like i've got two halves of an of of episodes like two interesting halves of two different episodes um i, I enjoyed it right and so you've got ship maneuvering and ship on you know i love a good ship on ship battle um and then i love the way that we got to see some fun, jokey campiness with with Pike and company. Um, so yeah, all in all, I thought this was a really positive episode. I was excited to watch it. Um, if I'm being honest, I tried to watch it like early, you know, like in the middle of the night. And I was like, oh, I'll just watch a little bit now. And that way tomorrow I'll finish it up. And I watched it all. So this has got to tell you that when it came to finishing the episode and going to sleep i chose finishing the episode so that's it's kind of a four lights up for me yeah yeah i agree with both of you there's um you know some big uh topics that i think they're swinging at that i am looking forward to like discussing in depth because i'm hoping that that's their purpose is to encourage us to discuss those things and then um you know i personally love when trek is really campy when trek is horny trek and so this definitely checked <laughs> a lot of those boxes for me between spock and spring um who are just I try not to be like creepy about commenting on people's looks, but Spark and Tupring are very good looking people. And so <laughs> I feel like they're really letting us enjoy that. Um, I also love that the return of the bodysuit. We haven't seen one of those in a while and we got to on our, our uh, pirate Capitan. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that I had some thoughts on, but I feel like they're playing with some of the tropes that I often see that occur, especially with um, trans feminine characters. And so uh, I'm I'm excited to see where they're going with it. I thought Jesse was incredible. Um, and overall, I enjoyed the ride of this episode. Um, so that's kind of my my hot freak. Um, for now, let's see what's going on in the chat. And I was going to say, Giraffe, I left you something in the private chat. Uh, yeah. Yes, you're a little a little glitchy. I'm but... a little glitchy again. Mm. Yeah, but we'll we'll try to get that fixed up. Um, what's eating my camera? Am I okay? I'm fine. I just have a blurry a blurry background because I am in a bedroom instead of my normal office. <laughs> so. Uh, all right. Hot break. A very fun episode. Loving Spock Chapel friendship. Uh, this is from GP. Pike totally reminded me of Shatner when Kirk is playing uh, acting to get someone to do something. Very, very TOS vibes going on in this particular episode. Nicole says, hot freak. I mentioned this on Slack, but I just wasn't into angels overacting. It kept taking me out of the show. Um, I thought it was fun. I enjoyed the camp of it all. I always love a big, I love a funny campy villain. I, I, I personally enjoy that, but I could see where others might not. 
Caitlin you know, says, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, Mariah, you know, what you mentioned about a campy villain. I, I think it's, it, you need it in this one, right? Because I was, mm-hmm. I was looking into it and going, okay, we kind of know when Spike's demise is happening, right? We have an idea when that happens. We, we know for sure, right, that Uhura is going to be fine. Mm-hmm. We know that Spock is going to live as long or longer than any of them um, in maybe a couple reincarnations. We we know that from what we hear, Kyle is going to make it through. We know Chapel is going to make it through. So when you when you lose this idea of true danger, right? So, you know, the only people that we, we're not quite certain on is una who we know at least makes it for a while right una actually Mm -hmm. makes it to the pilot Mm -hmm. of tos um ortegas we have no idea what's going to happen to ortegas right Mm -hmm. so i think when you have non non, you're right leon's another one Mm. outside of those i think you you need you a big bad scary villain who's threatening to kill anyone just doesn't quite fit sometimes you're like eh I know they're going to make it because I've, I've seen the, the sequel. The campy villain works, right? Because it, here's the deal. You're looking at it, you're like, eh, they're not going to kill anybody. <laughs> like, everybody's going to make it. So how do you make that entertaining? How do you make that really fun to watch? And I think I think that's an even greater challenge in creating a villain that that you're like, give me more screen time. And I thought with Captain Angel... It was like, okay, what are you? What's going to happen here? What are you doing? What's your end game? And it, it instead of just seeing how bad the villain could be, it's like, what do you want? Because I'm not sure. And then you have the big reveal. So I, I thought it worked. I thought the campiness of it actually worked really well for this setting. Yeah, I agree. Let's see here. Let's grab a couple more hot freaks. Kuhn says it was a fun wrap that was needed after last, last week's episode, but did we have to bring back Cybok? We do have to talk about that big reveal at the very end of the episode. <laughs> you know, I'm no Mike somewhere going, yes. Listen, I, I love the, I love the fact that you never know where it's going to go with Orion's. So you don't know if it's going to be a lower deck, uh, lower decks are Orion and discovery Orion. You don't know if it's going to be, uh, really crazy shooting people are going to be spaced and so on or it's just going to be a cook off and i kind of like it because even if we know they're going to make it they don't know they're going to make it and i think it's still a little bit of tension and i'm pretty sure they're going to end up killing lan at one point or another in strange new world and that's going to be an interesting episode so no i'm um i don't know i'm stressed about them and you know Star Trek, they're going to kill off somebody and then bring them back. So, classic. Oh, impossible. my money's on Kirk. Right. Sam, Sam Kirk? Kirk? Yeah, Sam Kirk first to go. <laughs> but we know when he dies, too. Yeah. So. yeah. Flying murder pancakes. I... <laughs> Flying I murder pancakes. Cheap? No, <laughs> unfortunately. I don't know what's going on. Um, Refresh. Should yeah, I refresh, can, Bob? Yeah, let's try to refresh and we'll we'll see what else is going on in the chat while you do that. All right, let's see. Um, Heaven Student says, I thought this episode would have been a great episode as a two-parter. I, I know some people wanted to see more of the mutiny going on. I definitely think that could have been fun. Let's get Giraffe back in. There you are. You look much better yes. now. Oh, my image is glitchy. Oh, that's weird. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the audio is also a little glitchy, but now, now okay. it seems to be potentially better you can also drop your um camera's uh resolution and sometimes that helps if the internet's being a little okay. meh thanks for sticking with us through some tech stuff y'all you know the internet <laughs> is fun um but i wanted to kind of dive in i think to um i don't know we could start with the sex do we want to start sexy books or dive right into the binary of spock did you just ask mm. this group if they want to talk about binary of spock or sexy books I I'm... know. <laughs> can we speak about both? <laughs> we can think about both. But I, I thought it was, uh, you know, kind of talking about the this particular episode, right? So we have the character of, of um, 
of Dr. Aspen slash Captain Angel, who does um, in the episode uses they, them pronouns, Jesse, particularly um, mm-hmm. as an actress uses um, she, her, and they, them pronouns. Um, but the books that they, uh, to bring references, luckily Collider grabbed all of the info, info for me, which is super healthy, helpful. So thanks, Collider. Um, and we have The Tropic of Cancer by Henry Miller, uh, which is like this very masculine point of view of sexuality. And then we have The Fear of Flying by Erica Zhang for a more feminine view of sexuality. And then we have Maggie Nelson's The uh, Argonauts, which is a mix of memoir and philosophy um, where she explores many things, including her love for her partner, Harry Dodge, who happens to be a trans masculine person. Um, and the title of the book refers to constantly changing and evolving parts of ourselves. And so I thought it was really interesting and I'd be, uh, you know, I want to hear what you think about this uh, giraffe in particular after our last kind of uh, conversation on the pod um, is that essentially Dr. in the character of Dr. Aspen, right? Like we get a, a kind of wonderful examination of like, you don't have to be two things. You are just yourself. Right. And mm-hmm. that is sort of like what I think we eventually get in the evolution of Spock. Like we eventually get there. And this seems to be the, the point where this is being brought to him. And I thought it was kind of really lovely that this is an episode kind of centering the trans experience and telling you like, we are beyond binaries right like we are spectrums of people and you just have to figure out where you lie on this spectrum so what do y'all think about that sort of framework for for spock's identity i'll jump in um i thought it was i thought it was great like i i I think i honestly rewound and watched it a couple times because i wanted to hear like really hear and not be distracted by anything else going on but this idea that you know, Spock in particular and everyone in general um, tends to look at this binary existence, right? I'm either A or I'm B, right? I'm either cool or I'm a nerd, right? I'm either short. Hey, nerd or cool, come on. Well, I mean, yeah. now, but there was a time <laughs> that that was not the case. And, you know, I think for for, for me in particular, I'll, I'll tell my story while I'm not... Um, specifically biracial, an African-American boy growing up in a predominantly white neighborhood who is into chess and rap music, like this idea of feeling, always feeling of like, do I, do I fit in one category? Do I fit in another? And, and, and really being able to say, whatever it is, whatever you identify it as, you don't have to, pick a side you can be you and that being you brings a great amount of value to the community that you're in and the environment that you're in you're in i i love that like i thought that that was a a really important message um and so it it resonated with me in particular i have many feelings about this conversation so i've seen the episode several times and the first time i watched it for me, it was about being biracial because that's how I read the episode. Then when I rewatched it, I was like, oh, I know many folks are going to read it as um, Spock being transcoded. I know many people yeah. read uh, Spock this way. So I was, I'm interested to go and read uh, <laughs> and read Twitter about this because it's not my, my experience. So um then I realized that it was a very good conversation because everybody could read it through their own um, uh, eyes and how they go through life and find something in conversation that is very interesting. I like the fact that it's not what you are because that question of what are you, I can't do this question anymore. So when, um, when Captain Angel goes, that's not about what you are, but who you are, I was like, that's, that's good. That's an interesting way to put it. And when they discuss in Spock's quarter, there's this other line where, what is it about? Sorry. Um, basically about you can be several things. You mm-hmm. can be different person at the same time because that's who you are. Uh, I think it's the best, the first time that Star Trek kind of does that conversation in an interesting way and I think I appreciate 
even more the fact that um, uh, Dr. Aspen uh, is a non-binary character because it adds to the conversation. Though I start to be a little bit annoyed at the fact that every Spock-centric uh, episode are about him being biracial and being a problem and how we cannot navigate it. He's not a kid. And even if right now he maybe doesn't have an answer, the fact that everybody around him always bring him to that question and this conversation is kind of becoming annoying. And I was having this conversation earlier. Um, I was saying, imagine if Stamet in Discovery had every single conversation about him being gay. Yeah. It's not... The character cannot be only that. And it cannot be every single conversation. The fact that Tipring is trying to understand more um, is cute and nice. And I think it adds to Tipring characters. But yet again, the only thing we speak about around Spock is how he's biracial. And even Dr. Espen that doesn't know him, I mean, knows him, but he's not mm -hmm. supposed to know him, you know? Mm -hmm. um, still brings that to the conversation. And I'm like, I was imagining being in his like place and being in my place of work, right? And people still bringing the fact of, so, are you French? Are you Somali? Like, how do you feel? What are you? It's not about what you are. It's about who you are, giraffe. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> but I think it's time to move on on Spock. I think it was a great conversation. It was really well brought. I think a lot of folks are going to be able to read something in this conversation and to be able to reflect about who they are and how they see themselves. But now I kind of want to Spock to be through with it and maybe mm -hmm. not be always the subject. Oh, I know. It's about putting people in boxes. And it's true. That's what we do. We always, mm -hmm. I need to know who you are and what you are, but it doesn't need to be the conversation all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I um I agree with you. I hope we finally get to move on. I felt like they really set this up and I know like the the other thing I try to remember is that um we are people who are more familiar with Spock as a character and this show is supposed to be like before we've come to know Spock and so it's those like origin pieces. But I agree with you, Giraffe. Like would this be really frustrating as someone in an office if you're just like you know, for me, because I, I consider myself kind of like on the gender spectrum If someone was just like, Oh, what's your gender today? And I'd be like, I don't know if I felt like I needed to tell you, I would tell you, you know, like you can, we can, we can deduce what it is from here on out. And why do we have to talk about it all the time? And I feel like it would also be more, there could be a possibility of it becoming more of an interesting topic. If it was Spock talking to like other people of like, and I think this is why I I, I personally uh, thought this was a more thoughtful way to do it is because he's talking to someone who also is living in a different, like an othered experience, right? So there's a difference when you're having a conversation with other people who are also living that othered experience versus like you're like the people who live in uh, more privileged spaces right? Having those conversations almost like to you rather than with you because they can't commune in that same way. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why I enjoyed the conversation between Aspen, Angel, and Spock more than any of these other sort of conversations that happened to him. This felt like the first time I've seen it happening with him in a way. I think the thing that is interesting to me is the as Dr. Aspen, th they approach Spock in a very familiar way, right? Mm -hmm. And as I go back and rewatch it, it's because they had an agenda, right? They're trying to play up upon Spock's insecurities and 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 Spock's confusion to manipulate him for their own purposes. But when I take a a, a step out, especially as I listen to to you giraffe you're right so not only is and i've had this happen being the only african-american person in a workplace 
especially during the time of George Floyd and issues like that, like all of a sudden I now have to talk about it all the time and I'm not, and, and I don't want to, right. But be honest with you. It's like in this, in this environment, I, I should be able to choose when I want to enter into those conversations because they're personal to me. Hmm. Um, and so you take that a step forward and you have someone who you just met who's now engaging you about a topic that is incredibly personal and sensitive to you and then telling you about yourself. When I zoom out, it feels a little, it, it feels a little, I don't want to say forced or wrong, mm. but it, there is it, an agenda. There isn't. There, so I get, I get why it happened. But I'm looking and going from an outside perspective, like that entire dynamic, that should have been the red flag. What, like Almost like, why are you talking to me this way? I don't know you, right? You're telling me that I need to be some way that the, the way I feel, like the fact that I struggle with my, with, with just going with my gut, you're telling me that there's a problem with that. I don't even know you, man. <laughs> like I... <laughs> I read it. I'm so sorry about the glitch. I'm so sorry. I see people. You actually I'm look and you're, sound you're a lot now. better yeah. now. So it, okay, it great. I don't know itself. what's happening. Yeah, hey, hey. the um, internet is a weird wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I explained it in my head throughout the episode because I had the same reaction. I was like, "What are you doing in his quarters? Like to speak about this? This is so weird." But then they explained that their husband is Vulcan and was Vulcan. And I was, oh, maybe, she, I don't know, maybe maybe they, they were trying to put in the story that they were seeing in Spock something that reminded them of uh, their husband. And then grief has been such a, you know, a theme. I thought, oh, it's going to go there. That's why they feel like they can share with Spock or um, there's something that they can help him with or whatever. But yeah, uh, then you understand that it's it's not the case. But that's how I tried to explain it. It's still weird. It's still weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was and, like, okay. And honestly, it's like I... I have to, it's like looking at that individual conversation. I was like, oh, this is such a, a nice way to frame this and to like get to this point for Spock. And then you get this point that Marge then brings up uh, an actor who is trans then being the villain. And it's like you then have this person who is um, has mal intent. Right. And that's the, the reasoning. But like you were saying, Clyde, the reasoning behind these conversations and I, by the end of it, I, I had a weird feeling at the twist. I was like, oh no, like we're really like, cause there are so many tropes, especially about trans femmes and trans women about being like two-faced and sneaky and like this idea that they're hiding something from people. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so I was like, oh no, we're falling down this, this rabbit hole. But then I was like, I, I feel like Star Trek as a whole has done a lot to try to not fall into those tropes lately. I, I will say lately with the, the asterisks and the caveat. And I also felt better knowing that the director was a trans woman and this is someone who was like really involved in this process. And so, and then we also get to the fact that the villain like core reasoning is not evil it is love and so then yes. i was like it get anyway there's so many levels of like complications of like oh no are we falling into this like bad trap oh no and then i was like i don't know i kind of love how campy angel was and that all of this was for love and it's not for like the the core reason was not malintent for for them in a way right <laughs> Mariah, I think you're 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 spot on though, right? Because I, look, I think representation matters, and what you mentioned is if this was done by a, a cis white male, I'd have more questions, mm -hmm. right? I really would. Like, and I, mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to be completely honest about that. But the fact that this was directed by a trans woman is it it tells me that there was somebody kind of in the asking process asking the questions right of like what's uh, the you purpose hope. Now, of this yeah i don't know for sure right but it, it says that hey there's someone in the room 
who may be able to take a perspective because again, as an African-American male, for me, representation matters. And so when, to me, when you have typically an all right writing staff and all right production team, all, all white production team, mm. then depicting, you know, black men and women in a particular light, I do have concerns, right? Like I legitimately have concerns and going, okay, well, and it becomes more than just a story. But I think what we see here is it feels as though someone said, hey, if we're going to do this, let's be thoughtful about it, right? Not saying we're going to get it all right. Not saying they're not going to be concerns. But it, at least let's make sure that there's somebody in the room who can raise a hand and go, hey, this is very tropey and will come across as fairly offensive. Can we rethink this? Like, I, I you hope that someone is in the room to represent people who aren't, especially when you're telling stories from a perspective that may not be represented. Mm -hmm. I do think too, that it's not the end of that story of mm -hmm. that plot line. We're going to say, see Captain Angel again, because we're going to see Cyborg again. And their relationship is going to be so interesting to explore and how they're going to manage to get him out of, prison or whatever like rehabilitation center we know it's not the end of the story too so i do hope that captain angel dr aspen is going to be a character that's gonna evolve and that we're gonna see more of and it's gonna get more complex i i, I do hope so I, I think you have to i think you have to because you set up a really interesting character mm -hmm. and the, the the thing i hate and not just in Trek, but really in anything is don't tease me, right? With a really <laughs> good character. And then just, just have him go away. I hate yeah. that. Mm -hmm. You know, like there, you know, there has to be a payoff at some mm -hmm. point. Like you've created this really interesting pirate. Like who doesn't love a pirate captain? I mean, come on, you've given me a captain pirate captain. Captain Angel too. With I mean, like, that hit, Cyborg, ca pirate Captain Angel, come on! Gotta, Cyborg is an in. interesting villain too because mm -hmm. he's a complex villain. So, I think the reveal at the end really warped me a little bit. I mean, oh, these characters are gonna come back. These characters are gonna be complex. There's gonna be a complicated storyline, and we're gonna see them again. So, mm -hmm. that's how I kind of eased my worry because I, I thought the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, here's the thing, like true representation means that you're able to play all of the characters. Right. So it's like, we were going to get to the place where like you are going to finally see queer coded uh, villains again, but hopefully they mm -hmm. aren't, that's not like their queerness isn't what's making them villainous. Right. Like mm -hmm. it's like just a part of who they are. And I think I see this happening with Captain Angel. And also, we all know we love a good gay pirate. We've all been obsessed. The top two shows Absolutely. like on streaming plat right, platforms right now are <laughs> Strange New Worlds and uh, and our flag means oh, death. Mean death. Yeah. We love queer pirates. So I'm I'm here for more queer pirates. Um, and, and I do appreciate that. The other thing is, while we are now reading Angel as a villain, who knows? how that character is eventually going to end up because we did not end their story quite yet. So mm -hmm. while they were the villain, that's what I want. I want complex villains. I don't want just the queer codedness of it all to make them a villain. And I think mm -hmm. we're going to get there. And, and I think here's the interesting thing about pirate captain angel as a villain. They didn't kill anybody. Nope. Like they literally didn't harm anybody in the process. That that they threatened to. I mean, yeah, he shot Spock with a stun gun. Okay, in the he'll back, <laughs> he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Trust it's gonna me. be okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's interesting, and I I think to your point, Mariah, when you talk about complex villains, right? Like to me, the best villains are ones that you you struggle hating, right? That you mm -hmm. kind of sort of mm -hmm. understand their perspective. You can see where they're coming for. You almost want to root for them when you can say. Man, I want to root for you if you weren't going up against my favorite character or my or, or my team, right? Like it's like, man, if you were going against the Klingons, I'd have your back. But you're going against the Enterprise, so I don't, right? Like if if we were seeing Pirate Angel do this 
to a Vulcan crew. I wonder if we would, I, I wonder if we would even call them the villain, right? I think this has the potential to get really interesting. And to your point, Giraffe, they've done it again with choosing a character like Cyborg, right? A character that, like, when that name is said, has a certain gravitas, but we know almost nothing about right like there's so much that you can do to explore and fill in the gaps that we have this could get really interesting really quickly for sure um i wanted to now that we've brought up well first did y'all notice we got some like tos era klingon action going on in this particular episode Super fun. Um, but what did y'all think about the kind of B plot line of this episode? We have Pike, who I think is trying to go again. Like they call Pike a Boy Scout very early on in the episode. And I think Pike's like, oh, I got to prove I'm not just a Boy Scout in this particular episode. Um, and and kind of really goes for it in this whole like uh captured crew getting punched in the face and then i'm gonna make chili (laughs) (laughs) you know there's so much about the b pot plot that i love it's the campiness of the you know when you have two people like um burnham and book would do and mention not insert planetary name right (laughs) or station Mm -hmm. or ship um no not that yes that like oh here we go like it's like okay you know shenanigans are coming um and so i thought it was fun i was like all right well this is going to be interesting and you know the whole idea of of a mutiny based on your culinary skills and talking trash about your captors cooking is hilarious to me and and has now officially set up the fact that I want at the end of this season I'm fully expecting to go onto Amazon and to purchase the Strange New Worlds Pike's cookbook like I want to make recipes from this a hundred percent we gotta have the ribs we gotta have the chili yeah these weird Vulcan tower of thing too. I want to know what's that about? Like the food, <laughs> the conic food they have. You yeah. know, like I, I, I wanted to know more about exactly what did he he cook? Because it, like you said, Mariah, the fact that you call it chili or could have been it's stew. It's chili. Like, it looks like I chili need, to me. I needed like to. Chili. I needed to know more about what it was. Like, I thought it was interesting. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed great B plot. Like, just I loved it. And and I'm with you. It's chili because think about it. Just the fact that he's cooking chili and serving chili to a bunch of space pirates is so much more hilarious than I don't know, and a space dish or whatever they could make up. Chili's chili's the plate. Yeah, I mean when you when you think back to like Pike's mountainous like Wyoming Montana house or whatever, like that's that's a cabin where chili is made on the regular. So you know that Pike and he's like smelling all the all the spices in the kitchen. So yeah. definitely definitely happening. He's, he's from the Mojave, so Southern mm-hmm. California, you know. I mean, a Star <laughs> Trek cookbook would work for me. I de- like I there's I there's one. Is There's there? one, but it's the Neelix cookbook, and it's no, no, I mean, oh, no, I need, is. no. I need something <laughs> with. I, I need something with a little Riker in it, a little Cisco mm. in it. You know what I mean? I mean, a deep face V <laughs> something. <laughs> yes, you know, I need. I that's what I need. I need a, a, a cookbook of stuff I can actually cook. Neelix, okay. I don't want to eat any of that stuff. No, Neelix. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The cookbook actually exists. It's not a joke. Yeah, it'll stay it. wherever it is. It's going to stay there. Um, I've seen a few requests in the chat, and it was definitely also on my list. But I feel like we have to talk about this uh, ember of a love triangle between Spock, Chapel, and T'Pring, uh, where... I mean, if I was to pring, I also would have been like, I saw the plan. You were trying to keep my honor. But after seeing that kiss, though, I'd be like, I don't know. That was some pretty good acting. <laughs> Listen, there, there is there is nothing like that the the after kiss linger 
right? Like the, the slow the, pull. The and not even just a slow pull, but there's almost like, wait, what just happened? I just I'm here for a second. This podcast like, is steamy. I'm just like that is like <laughs> whoa. Like if if Tapring is paying attention at all, you she needs to look over it at Chapel and go, I see you. I saw that, right? Like I understand it was acting, but I but got was my it eye on you? I got my eye on you. Was it acting? Because that was I was like, whoo. I mean, like, technically, yes, it was acting, but is it acting? Do you know what I mean? For those characters, is it acting or was it, oof, we've now gotten something that we've maybe been thinking about for a while and now it's happened. <laughs> I I have a lot of problem with what they're doing with Chappelle, like so many uh, as a character, because so far, that's all we know of her. And we have a badass woman in STEM who is a geneticist who is here in the flagship of the Federation to do badass science. And so far, she's being the romantic interest of absolutely everybody. We've talked about who she's sleeping with more than anything else. And I'm so mad for Chapel. And the fact that we know nothing happens uh, because it goes all the way to TOS, right? She's still like having her crush 10 years later, tell me one professional woman who has such a job, such a de- like knowledge and like such opportunity who is going to be here just to have a crush on the lieutenant for 10 years. I mean, like, come on. Here's the thing, though. I 100% agree with you. I, I really need a chapel-based episode for me to... F- fully engage with this character on the levels that I want to because she it is outrageously charming and I want more I want to know more than just that and I, there are things from this episode there's some cute callbacks back to TOS like Chapel was never great at the computer which is like a funny reference since the the original actress was also the voice of the computer so there's mm-hmm. some like fun little easter egg moments in there with Chapel being like why can't I just send out a simple SOS um mm-hmm. But I, I do want more than just charming. I, I enjoyed getting to see her sort of use her badassery, if you will, kind of making her way to engineering and truly being the only uh, crew member that doesn't really get caught. That isn't our our, our prime two here. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I enjoyed that for her. And I liked seeing her getting to, to kind of knock a bunch of people out with her her little medical supplies since she didn't have a phaser on her which does feel like uh if you're going to code red i feel like everyone should be phasered up i guess but maybe that's not how that works if you're in medical um but yeah i i'm hoping we get more i agree with you giraffe i i need some more besides oh but she's the home waker too like i'm kind of done with these characters it's 2022. I don't want the the homewrecker. Like the beautiful woman was like very charming. Is the homewrecker? And I'm like, come on, come on. Come I mean, on. Just, does she have to be a homewrecker in my life or in my in my dream? It's just a beautiful like polyamorous love triangle between Supreme Spock and Chapel. <laughs> you think and I Spring is like, gonna go for this? I Spring. mean. Tapering tried to murder somebody. Tapering is reading reading all these books. I'm telling you. She's she's reading all the books that's going to get her there. (laughs) Yeah. You you read enough Henry Miller, you you might try what might be your thing. I'm just saying. (laughs) True. Some sexy books. True. But I I do think that, I don't know. uh, For me, it's so far very limited stories, and I cannot fall in love with the character because so far. It's not stuff I'm very interested in. Like, I like shipping. I ship like everybody. Like, sure, you know, but I fall in love for characters that have dimension and that I can admire. And so far, this is, I don't really care of like their love triangle. It's hot. It's steamy. They're all very hot. It's very good. But this is not why I watch Star Trek. And we need mo- women that have. A little bit of substance, and I'm waiting this for the chapel. I want something else you, for her. You want more Beverly Crusher, is what I'm. Yes, asking. that's what you want. Yes, you want. 
I have no problem if she does all that, if there's like something else behind, but so far there's nothing. And I I need them, it's episode seven. I need them to like act up on this and give me something else than just her love stories and her crush and her oh and googly eyes and like I need something else behind. I'm I would be cool with all this if, with all this if we had like a very science-based episode where she was saving the day. And so far, we have not really had that. We had a little bit, a little. Yeah, bit. it was like the know. first episode where they're like, "Oh, she's so smart. She studies all these genetics. She's gonna like recode you or whatever." But mm. yeah, I think. <laughs> but I think you can say that about everybody so far, right? Like, and it's tough because we don't have twenty six episodes. Yeah. To to, <laughs> to really dive into this cast, and I'd be here for it. Um, and I think we're doing something a little bit different than we, what we've done before, right? Like if you go back to TNG, um, you know, we got a little bit of, oh, Riker and Troy have a past. For the most part, it was, it was business, right? When you look at Voyager, you, you had, you know, Tom Paris and Harry Kim trying to catch women. And every time they caught one, they ended up on a murder trial. So... <laughs> <laughs> like, True. like it was, it, True. It That's was so mostly true. about like it was really about the work and then you had these like in their downtime mm -hmm. bunch of geeky scientists are bad at relationships right um and then it, and then you'd get this this moment where oh you know there's this connection right even if for Riker it was with you know a holo you know a character on a holodeck right in minuet you know where you get Again, oh, there's a theme here, Jordy and a character on a holodeck and Leah Brahms. Like you get these moments where you see some some real, to your point, three-dimensional, like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm here for it. It seems like with Strange New Worlds, we we got to the romance kind of quick, right? And and Spock and to praying and then chapel and the conversations about romance happened mm -hmm. really quick. That seems a little unusual for us, a little bit of a shortcut. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's part of it, I think, is it is that mirror of TOS, right, where there wasn't quite the same character depth, especially for our, our the women on that crew. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like they're obviously doing way better than TOS. But at this point, it is 2022. And I would hope we've graduated from the 1960s. But um I, I, I hope we get to see a chapel episode. We've gotten so much Spock background, I, I think, because Spock is obviously a big fan favorite. Um, mm -hmm. And we get to explore some of this like origin story. But I agree with you, Giraffe. I really want a full chap. I want a full chapel episode. I feel like that character is do that. And, and I hope we get it by the end of this season. So then we can just like punch in for season two with some more hijinks we know everybody's backstories at this mm -hmm. point and to me that's yeah. a really successful season one is you've gotten to learn and love your characters so then you've got the full team up we love a team up on this pod the full team up is teamed up and we're we're ready to go for season two which uh, i know they're already like i think done filming these they're already into season three so we, we got yeah. plenty of this coming yeah. coming down the pipeline yeah. I need more than just Chapel though. Can can I get a little oh, back yeah. to on Ortegas? Can yeah, Hammer, Hammer, Hammer. Hammer. You know, we it, we're still waiting to like. Can we wrap up some stuff with Mbanga? Like, there's a lot here, mm -hmm. and you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, I when was the last time we saw Kirk? Like, we see like Kirk <laughs> walking down the hall. I know. I kind Stop of Kirk. I oh love my God. <laughs> I love the weird cameos of Sam Kirk, though. I think it's a really fun just like toss toss out there. I, I was hoping we were going to get some more like kind of comedic moments with that character. They'll probably still come, but I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I want I want to see more of uh, Sam Kirk. I just well, I want him to be in every episode in random places like with Charlie, you know, like just <laughs> Point passed out on it. accident yeah. <laughs> well, th well think about what discovery did right like there became a point where it, it was almost like can we play a game of fine linus right how many times oh was linus yes. like in the back you know like in an elevator like there was like linus was just around all the time mm. i'm totally okay with that being sam kirk 
right? Like he's just like it would almost make it fun. It's almost like a drinking game. Take a shot every time you see Sam Kirk in the background. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I would completely be up for that. But also, you've got Rebecca Romaine in this show. Yeah. And you're not doing a lot with her. I'm just saying, like, mm. like, you had a little episode, you know, you've done some stuff here, but you got some heavyweights. There's a lot of camera time to go around. Um, and we're spending a lot of time on Spock and Tupring. And to your point, Mariah, they're pretty, but I need yeah. more. Give me some more. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to go through. So this episode opens with Tapring doing a personal log, which um, we don't often get a non Starfleet um, officer doing a personal log. I went through and the only one that's obvious to me is Seven of Nine, who was never actually a part of the Federation, does quite a few personal logs in Voyager. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much all Starfleet people. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought that was an interesting tidbit that we fully get someone who's not a part of that. And then that's interesting that it's like essentially part of her diary, right? If it's a personal yeah. log, because it's not something that's logged to Starfleet. You know, Mariah, you just said something that sparked a question. All right. So we're seven episodes in. Mm -hmm. Do you have characters that you feel really, really strongly about? Because what you said was when you talked about Voyager, I was thinking about how quickly... I realized I like Chakotay, right? How quickly I thought Balana's fascinating, right? Yeah. It, it took me, um, when you go back and, and kind of watch like Encounter at, at Farpoint, like it wasn't long before I was like, oh, that LeVar Bird character is kind of interesting, right? Like, like there are these moments where I just, I, I immediately gravitate to some characters. I'm wondering if that's the case. Are there people that I'm like, man, I really... Like, I'm going to have that action figure when is this all said and done. I don't know if I'm there yet. <laughs> mm, I did just get fact-checked by the chat, as they always are, because they're smarter than I will ever be, <laughs> is that book has also done a personal log. But um, for the show, uh, good call out, guys. Um, what was I going to... So who do I want an action figure of? I mean... Like, who are you... Are you are you am I standing anyone yet? Yeah. Is it, is it... Like, are you like, yo, that chapel... When I'm standing in line for her autograph at, at Comic Con, like, is there anyone that you're just like, that's that's my person? I want I want a spinoff starring them. I mean, but it's it's almost unfair because like Ahura is is always going to be that person. <laughs> yeah, like they're well, exactly. Thank you, Giraffe. <laughs> like, I don't know which which one of those pictures am I supposed to be excited about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, Uhura. like Ahura, like yeah, duh. sure, okay. <laughs> But it's a, I guess I'm trying to, I, I think if we're going non like legacy characters at this point, like I find Ortegas to have like the most fun banter on the bridge with Pike. And so I really want to know more about their relationship. And I would definitely stand in, in line and not just because I have a little bit of a crush on Ortegas. It, it's probably, absolutely you know, yeah. for other reasons, definitely for other reasons. She does <laughs> get some of the best lines in the entire show like, like they're just funny. first date close third date close blind date close that was a fun i i really yeah. enjoyed that, that little great. clip great like i i just remember like man i was thinking to myself like it took me it was so good it took me out of 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 the moment because i was thinking what was it like to write that like like when, when people read that like what was the reactions that they were getting like that's how good i thought it was in terms of writing i was just like oh man that was that was so perfect and she doesn't get much like she's just like kaboom and it's hilarious and yeah. witty and perfect and you know what I'm i do say. think no that's what she said like oh yeah boom. <laughs> and i mean she really doesn't have a lot of lines but they stick because she delivers them with so much i don't know pizzazz and mm -hmm. humor and the timing is always perfect and even when she's not saying anything at the end when pike is doing like the the pirate and una is like please stop you see ortega being like <laughs> and it's so good she's absolutely perfect in this role and she brings that levity levity right mm -hmm. yeah to every episode even when she's doing something absolutely insane like like being at the helm of a full starship and 
and piloting by hand. And that's incredible. So, yeah, I'm glad about the Spock centric episode, but can we have an Ortega centric episode? Like when? Like Nicole said, she reminds me of Reno with the one lighters. Very yes. much that same vibe as Reno. I also, I want like, you know, in my dream, like Strange New Worlds lineup, I want like a fun Western ball br- bar brawl episode, which TOS loves a they, good Western they, reference. They shot one. <gasps> I think they shot one in New Mexico. Oh, I think, so uh, yeah, I, I remember seeing like, like, knowing that they were shooting in New Mexico for season and everybody was like, oh, they're shooting in New Mexico. It's going to be a, a, a forest episode. That's all I know. They just shot in New Mexico. I've seen uh, nothing. So yeah, just I, my hope. I want a bar brawl with like Pike and Ortega. It's just like p- slugging whiskey and punching faces. Like I, that's all I want. <laughs> a la who, who was a Tilly and, um, and Michelle. Who, yeah. And Mich- and Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I see where you're going with that. That, yeah. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. Very I, much that bad. Yeah. And I, I kind of what I'm what I'm looking for is I'm, I'm excited about when we're going to get like the back in time slash mirror verse episode because we always <gasps> get one. Oh, my God. Like, we're going to get know, it. This will be, gonna that'll, be with this crew, it's going to be incredible. Incredible. I can't wait. All right, y'all. Do you have any other thoughts, feelings, things you want to to talk about in this particular episode before we wrap this bad boy up? No, just um, I I I look forward to Thursdays and and getting to watch. You know, we can we can nitpick a little bit and we can have great discourse about choices, but at the end of the day, I'm still very excited that that we've got more Trek. Um, and I already can feel myself going, we're seven episodes in. That means that there's not a lot left. Mm-hmm. 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 Although it does mean we are getting closer to Lower Decks time, which oh, I'm really yes. excited about. Love. So excited about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Well, thank you all again for tuning in. This has been a blast. Uh, Giraffe, where else can people listen to your uh, wonderful thoughts and opinions about Star Trek? I'm on Strange New Pod every Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. That's why I'm a, a little bit tired because I just <laughs> jumped I know. pod today. Double duty. Giraffe jumped in because I thought I, was, yeah. thought I was going to work late. And Giraffe is wonderful and was willing to step in just in case. And um, if you come at the San Diego Comic Con, don't hesitate to hit me up on Twitter at Lyrical Giraffe because I'll be moderating a panel there. And I'd love to see more Trekkies in the panel yeah so exciting yeah. Clyde where can people find you on the internet you can always find me at Clyde Haynes on Twitter um, yeah stop by give me a follow drop me a note it's where you can chat with me yeah and you can find Clyde's uh, panel from Picard Day on the official Star Trek on Paramount Plus account and we've retweeted it from our account as well you can yeah. find us at Star Trek pod on all social platforms you can visit star trek pod.co to find links to everything and to find our patreon patreon.com slash star trek pod for just two dollars an episode you can come hang out with us in slack we'd love to see you there we're chatting trek all the time doing the watch alongs with some of the best people on the internet we love y'all so much thanks again for tuning in until next time live long and prosper bye